Hey, hi everyone. I think we'll get started. Um, thank you so much for coming. And um, yeah, thanks for joining for this session where we, which we've planned um, because we want to help share everything that we've learned so far um, from the pandemic um, and the response um, from the last lockdown to help hopefully make this lockdown a bit more manageable um, for your food enterprise. So we go to the next slide. Thanks, Louise. So here's a bit about what to expect from this session. Uh, we're going to start with a presentation from myself and Louise. Um, so I'm Kay and I'm a food marketing specialist and I work with the OFN admin team and Louise. I work on the OFN support team um, and I answer lots of emails from you and I help you, um, hubs um, get set up and run efficiently. Excellent. And after, so the presentation is going to be filled with lots of different tips and ideas and resources um, to help um, you and your food enterprise to, to thrive through the lockdown. And then after that, we're going to have time for an open Q&A session, which will give us all um, the chance to learn from each other and share our knowledge and experience so we can yeah, be stronger together. First thing we want to talk about is how you, um, some ideas around how you can support vulnerable and self-isolating customers. The pandemic has shown many people for the first time just how vulnerable our food systems are in times of crisis. And you know, we all remember from earlier this year, um, the empty supermarket shelves and fully booked supermarket delivery sl uh, slots. Here's um, a photo of the Ocado delivery queue, which if you haven't seen yourself, I'm sure some of your customers would have. And so that was for the first time for, for many of us to be afraid of not getting enough food. Um, so this brings me to my first point, and it's to generate customer loyalty, um, it's really important to understand how your customers are feeling at this time. And so with this in mind, consider what's going on for them. Um, what do they need? What do they want? What are their needs and issues at the moment? So, for example, of a, a way to think about this is that if your sales become unmanageable, you might need to disappoint some current or potential customers who've not been able to order from you. And due to the uncertainty of the times, they might have a stronger emotional response to missing out on your order cycles than usual. So it's just good to keep these things in mind and, and consistently think about how your customers might be feeling and thinking and interacting with your food enterprise at this time. And that brings me to my next point, And that's that in times of anxiety, it is extra important to be really clear in your communication with your customers. Wherever you can, keep your customers informed of what's going on and what they can expect with order cycles, any stock risks and things like that. And also try to set realistic customer expectations which you can deliver and make sure to reassure any, any customers you might have disappointed um, that you're working hard to get this food to as many people as possible. Um, for example, if you sell out really fast and your order cycle page is up for a long time, so if you sell out everything and you've got your order cycle page up, page up for ages, some customers might think that you're closed all the time if they've come a couple of times and they're only seeing your order cycle close page. Um, so they might be disappointed and just not come back. And if they're vulnerable and self-isolating, it might be a really negative experience for them. So an email or a note on your order cycle close page is a really good opportunity to keep those customers looped into what's going on with your shop front. And it's also another opportunity to reassure them um, and to point them in the direction of your priority list for vulnerable customers, for example, which we're going to cover later in a bit more detail. And that also brings me to my next point, which is to think of all the different ways you can ensure your most vulnerable customers can have access to food. Um, for vulnerable and self-isolating people, it's really important for them to know that they have food coming every week. And you can use this opportunity as well um, to go the extra mile and offer a personal touch with your customers. Um, use this as a time to forge a personal connection with your customers. And that's one of the things that will be missing from their relationship with the supermarkets. And that places us um, in a really great position to support vulnerable and self-isolating people's access to food and generate long-term relationships in the long run. And so this is just a really nice um, example of, of a kind of a note and a present that was given to one of the hubs from their customers and just shows this kind of the importance of this time for forging that emotional personal connection with your customers. Okay, um, I think, well, the majority of customers will contact their hub or local food enterprise directly um, because obviously if they contact the OFN support team then um, we just have to put them in touch with the business we can't um, 
process orders or um, talk about products and stuff because we, it's not our it's not what we know. But um, there were when the pandemic started in March and April, um, people did get so anxious that some of these people did contact the support team. And so I probably saw a very small proportion of the number of emails which were sent to food enterprises on the network. Um, but the message you got really rang home and uh, emphasised how anxious people were and how um, grateful they were when that they could get, uh, source food from their local suppliers. I think these just reminders of um, how people who were quite vulnerable or elderly felt or those who um, had parents in those groups or loved ones in those groups. And um, even last Saturday at the start of this second lockdown, some messages got through to Earth and support. Um, and so I imagine quite a few uh, businesses on the network had more messages than we did. Um, so these are some practical tips for how you can use your the OFM platform to support your vulnerable and elderly customers in particular. And most of these were put into practice by hubs who were operating in March and April. But I'm aware that a lot of hubs and shops um, have come on board in the last couple of months or last um, three or four months and maybe uh, don't have these things in place at the moment and might want to over the winter. So. Um, one thing that a lot of hubs wanted to do was um, sort of open their shops early for elderly and vulnerable customers and sometimes key workers too, which is very akin to how supermarkets operate did at the start of the pandemic as well. And um, there's steps in the slides that show you how to do this. So these slides will be online later and you can just follow the steps if you haven't got this set up and would like to. Another thing is that you might want to offer um, free or reduced rate delivery to those that are elderly or self-isolating, um, especially as those are the people that are told to really stay at home and uh, limit their social contact as much as possible. But they might also be the people who most use public transport um, and it's much better for them if you can get their food to them than them taking the bus because that puts them at risk. Um, I think we all have to recognise that um, as much as we'd like to, not everyone is going to be able to use the internet or will want to use the internet, especially if they're um, feeling anxious anyway and um, about their food supply. And if they don't like placing orders on, over online, then it might be a nice thing to do is to set up a li list of phone numbers of um, people who you know, you know who are elderly or vulnerable locally and give them a call each week to see if they wanted an order or not. I know this is something that Tamar Valley Food Hubs did in March and April. Um, and really that phone call could be the only person that that person in, speaks to if they live on their own in a week. So it, it, it um, gives more of a service to the customer than just um, taking their order. Um, one thing that might be quite nice is at this stage where you're sort of still preparing for the winter months and lockdown, is um, to have a look at your regular customers. Um, do they do you have a group of customers or some customers who order pretty much the same thing every week? Um, if so, so you can give them security and give um, also your supplier security and knowledge that they're going to get regular orders by offering them subscription service so that their um, regular items are, are placed in an order automatically for them. Um, at the time of panic buying, um, it was sometimes Cubs had to um, decide whether person A or person B got products because there was a limited supply. And obviously you might want to prioritize your shopping list so that um, if you're choosing between two people, um, you give the items to the people who bought from you more frequently rather than the new customer perhaps. If you want to um, have a priority shopping list and uh, sort be able to sort through your data, who's bought, how many times, etc., then do get in contact with the OFS and support team, and that's something we can sort out for you. And then regarding your food enterprise in terms of uh, providing a service to deliver food to the elderly and vulnerable, um, I think it's extra. Um, you need to bear in mind extra precautions need to be taken because. The, by visiting multiple households, delivering food, um, you are putting them at risk and 
that's where everyone's responsibility comes in to really uh, rigorously follow COVID guidelines. And um, on to Kay. Um, so I'm going to talk a bit here about customer confidence. And um, customer confidence is a measure which shows how consumers feel about the economy and their personal financial situation at a given time. So when this is high, people are spending more, and when it's low, people are spending less. And with all the uncertainty that we're seeing at the moment, customer confidence is at an all time low. Um, and many people have been affected financially by the pandemic and have financial security concerns. So if you know that many of your customers have been impacted, you could have a look at your messaging and to focus a bit more on what you offer that's of value for money. Or you could also revisit your range to include um, basic essential items or perhaps even look into putting together an essentials box. Um, so it might be worth sitting down and having a think about ways that you might be able to, to address this concern that some of your customer um, customers might be having. And I've also included here, we'll share the slides after the session, there's a link um, to a previous webinar that we did, which is all around um, marketing messaging, um, which you can look at later if that's of interest to you. Another major customer concern at the moment is around cleanliness. And for lots of people, supermarkets feel like unsafe territory and this could be a really great opportunity to help your customers to feel safe and secure shopping with you. So what's your COVID policy? Can you communicate more how you're keeping your customers safe um, so that you can help your customers to have more confidence in your processes? Um, for example, are you working with scheduled or staggered collection times? Um, when people come to collect from you, um, can they expect queues? Um, have you given your customers enough space to shop in safety? Um, if all of this applies, then, then share these details with your customers through what you're kind of putting out through social, through email, or just generally through your emails with your customers, um, or on your shop front page in your notices section. In all of these spaces, try and use that space to help your customers to have the confidence to shop with you. Um, another point here around customer confidence is around belief and confidence in access to food. So this is also an opportunity to shout about why we need a resilient local food system. Why should we have resilient supply chains and, and actual relationships with suppliers and producers and why this is so important. So, um, and also this, like the thing around confidence and access to food, it, it also demonstrates why um, communication is key. So you might've had to cap your orders due to packing capacity and some customers may have missed out. Um, so when your order cycle closes, you could send an email to your mailing list explaining why some um, customers might not have been able to order from you. So at every point, just think about what you're saying to your customers and how to communicate more and more clearly to them. And yeah, and also you could implement waiting lists if you can't cope with demand and wherever you can communicate the steps that you're taking to ensure your customers access to food. And that's on to you, Louise. Yeah, I think again, um, I think I've mentioned this several times in recent webinars that um, it's always better to set, uh, ask your producers to set a finite limit to their stock rather than set them as infinite, um, because it's better to sell out of a product than have too many orders and then have to go to customers and refund certain customers or have to decide whether person A or person B gets an item. Um, I think this time round, um, this lockdown, you it's always good to be in regular contact with your suppliers and um, just check that they're checking with them maybe once a week or once a month that they're able to supply your thing, um, their products, and also run through have a plan in mind for what you do if one of them got contacted by track and trace or and had was asked to self isolate, or if someone actually had a positive COVID test and wasn't able to supply, um, plan for these kind of situations and then as um Kay sort of touched on um also plan on for the maximum number of orders you can process um for example if you know one week you're going to be short of staff because people are self-isolating then this maximum number might fall and if um you need to then you can contact the, the support team and we can send you a notification when your orders have reached that limit um, so you can soft close your order cycle early. I'd always re recommend soft closing rather than hard closing. And by that, I mean, hard closing would be where you just change the date and time of your order cycle to um, 
close date to now, whereas soft closing would be um, you use a different method, which is placing the um, the steps for links for steps in these slides. And it just means that if someone's in the process of checking out when you close your order cycle, their order will still go through and they won't be cut off mid payment. So over to Kay. Compared to the vulnerability and uh, the long complex supply chains of the supermarkets, community food enterprises, um, particularly in the last lockdown, really demonstrated um, amazing resilience and the ability to adapt rapidly um, to the crisis. So the question here is, is how do we cope when new customer numbers go up, order numbers go up, order values go up? What we learned from last time is there's a couple of things that you could consider doing. Can you organize extra collection points and days? Um, are deliveries possible? If it's not sustainable um, in the long run, perhaps you know, this could be something you could just prioritize for the vulnerable um, for now through the next couple of months. Um, but something to think about. And do you, another thing to think about is, do you need to rethink your team's shift patterns? Um, have you built in safety into, into these patterns? Like for example, having no overlap teams in case someone from one team gets sick. Um, and also can you redeploy any of your vulnerable team members or staff uh, to different parts of the business so they, could, so they have no contact with customers to help keep them safe as well? Um, also, do you need more space for packing? Um, or again, it's touching on what Louise has just mentioned, putting a cap on orders and new signups. Um, and also, you know, with a kind of thought on marketing, perhaps there's also time when you could schedule your social media in advance um, or, or emails for your order, cycle open, your order cycle opening reminders. So anything you can do to kind of take marketing out the way, but keep it going uh, just in case you run out of time. And there's like lots and lots of materials um, on the Thriving Food Hubs Facebook group that can walk you through the steps for this. And also if you need any help, um, I'm always in that group. So just contact me um, personally and I'll, I'll, I'll help. So again, um, it's always good to check in with those who volunteered with you in the spring. Um, I think that a number of hubs that were up and running in the, in the spring, they had lots of, of volunteers for people who were off work with, due to furlough and things like that. Some of those people might have gone back to work. Some of those people um, who might have been drivers, they might have been driving for you for free to do deliveries and now they've run out of money and they can't. Um, and equally just checking with people in case to make sure that they haven't got, um, aren't sick and they're still around and still can do things. And I think the, the difference between this lockdown and the last lockdown, um, and I think there probably there will be more lockdowns over the, until we got the vaccine and it comes online, um, is that now we have got a track and trace system, although um, how effective it is, we don't know, but it's more than it was in um, March and April. And um, so more people will be asked to self-isolate because they will be in, being in contact with those with positive tests. And so just prepare for that, both in terms of staff shortages, but sort of have a plan in place in case a customer has a positive test or is um, asked to self-isolate between ordering and when they're due to collect, um, what would you do in this scenario? Think, uh, could you be able to deliver it and own their order and things like that? Um, the, again, about deliveries, um, checking in with your drivers, can they deliver this time round? Um, some good tips have come up in the last few weeks from other hubs that we've heard talk. Um, uh, things like um, Mercia and Tamar, they both ask their suppliers to drop off orders to customers on the way home. So um, someone might be delivering their bread um, to the hub and then they take customers orders to drop off on the way home. And having like a bank of drivers so that you have a backstop in case your first person is um, off sick and then you might need a backstop to the backstop etc. Um, yeah, something the nice that we've seen happen over the last six months or so is that often you'll find that word of mouth spreads and that means that there's more demand for your um, service from local people so um if person a shops in your hub they might recommend you from uh, to their neighbors and then you quite often or we've seen 
um, get whole streets of people who uh, start ordering from a hub. And if you're delivering to them, it saves your, you time and money to deliver to them in bulk. Um, so you can pass up this saving to the customer by offering like groups who might live um, close together in the same road or same couple of streets, slightly cheaper delivery. Um, in terms of other delivery services, uh, there's been some really innovative ideas that come out of other hub, uh, hubs on our network. Uh, for instance, James from Stroudco a couple of weeks ago uh, mentioned that they were talking to the local pharmacy to coordinate their food deliveries with the drug deliveries. And also a bicycle club um, was volunteering to take the parcels around because they wanted um, the exercise apart from anything else. And then I think uh, Tamar, um, their local chippy uh, has been volunteering to do food deliveries for the hub because he gets to drive around the local community in his van, which is a nice lot of marketing for him. So it works both ways. And if you're going to ask um, a sort of non-regular people to do deliveries for you in their personal cars, just check check with them that they've checked with their insurance and added business cover to their insurance plan this usually doesn't cost them anything extra but it's the better thing to have in just in place the next um tip for this is also to be really aware of the rules to protect your food enterprise because last time we heard that many hubs were left to create their own processes and procedures and rules um, but this time around, there are definitely more government guidelines, which come with some risks um, for non-compliance and um, maybe some fines. So it's really vital to be aware of what the rules are and to protect your food enterprise. This is time to think about what, if you haven't already, um, or if you're a new hub that might have started after lockdown, or it, it really think about what is your COVID policy. Um, create a policy document which you can circulate with your team of volunteers. And there's a link here to an example from Strauco. Um, so we're going to be showing the slides, so all of these links will be clickable, so you can have a look at this later and see what applies to you and what you'd like to use or keep, or if there are any other examples that you've seen. Um, and also, think in advance of, like what Louise has been saying, think in advance of, of what you will do um, for different eventualities. So, for example, if a customer or staff member refuses to wear a mask, what's your policy? Uh, if someone tests positive, what's going to happen to all of the staff who worked with that person on, in the hub? Um, what are your policy around all these things? So it's kind of doing your own kind of personal risk assessment and, yeah, having, having an idea of what you do. Um, the other thing, and this was a quote from Al, um, and that's to deal with pride. And this is where you can look to other hubs for inspirational examples. And this for this is for things um, to help you think about the kind of things you might want to think about in a risk assessment, um, health and safety processes, procedures, that kind of thing. This is just something that I found on social media for a business that was um, local to me. And I think it's quite an innovative way to encourage your customers to adhere to the two metre rule when they're a collection. And it says that if you can't read it, keep one cow apart. So a cow is approximately two metres in length. So um, if you are going to have, if you do have queues when people come to collect their goods, this might be something that you could think of and maybe even put it on your social media. Um, how many cabbages make up a two metre length? In a, um, or loaves of bread on average, it's just a different way. It's always good to engage people. But probably thinking of the more serious things, um, you can. it's good to inform your customers of their obligations um, and also reassures them that you actually have got a COVID policy by putting all these things on your shop notices page or on your social media or on your website or any kind of um, literature you have out there. Um, and also another place you could put it on the platform is on your shipping method. If you go into the um, edit your shipping method, you've got the description box and in that description box, you can all, as long as, along with putting things like the place of collection and the time frame of collection, um, you can put your COVID policy in there. Um, one thing that a number of hubs have already asked us to set up is to send out uh, time slots for their customers to collect their items um, so that you've got the as customers arrive in, stack, in a staggered form rather than haphazardly during a collection window. This will ensure 
social distancing will help ensure social distancing more easily and get in contact if you want us to help you set that up. Um, it's not just your customers that need to social distance, it's kind of everybody. And so one thing that um, was brought to my mind, uh, my mind by um, Doro from Lockerville was that to space out deliveries from your suppliers if they all come at the same time normally. Um, and also space out your staff when they're packing boxes. And Kay's already mentioned this, um, have limited crossover between teams when they're packing. If you share delivery vans, then also um, factor in time to clean down the van between drivers and make sure you have enough masks and hand sanitizer and soap for everybody, which is um, so you've got enough to go round. I wanted to really point out how we are much stronger together and it, for, in any way that we can. Um, for example, through these webinars, um, how can we work together and how can we learn from each other? And it's remembering that we're a food community and we can learn from each other. And there's a list of, um, in the next slide, um, different things that you can do to be creative with um, partnerships. So for example, you could um, be creative with what you do with your suppliers. So can you, with your supplier, you know, for example, if you want, if you actually want, if you're in a different position and you want more sales um, through lockdown, could you get your suppliers to spread the word through their networks, perhaps so you could reach um, and give back to more members of your community or reach more people who might be self-isolating. Um, also, uh, could your suppliers help with deliveries to vulnerable customers? So when your suppliers drop off, um, uh, drop off produce on their way back, is there anyone on their route back that they could then drop off um, to? And that's something um, that was an inspiration from um, Ruth from Mercia. And also, yeah, um, team up with those of a similar outlook and you can also look to your network as well um, and also think if there are any opportunities for grants and funding and this comes from last the last webinar we did on lockdown where James von Straub co-mentioned that um, they were able to get a um, grant from the local council um, to help uh, ensure that there was a way for suppliers to be able to access the market and also um, on this point of Stronger Together, wherever you can encourage word of mouth in your communities. And this is another good time to think about, um, yeah, perhaps if, again, if you're not kind of totally open with sales and you want to grow your sales still, then this could be a time to um, grow through word of mouth. So think about who your best customers are. If you've got a strong relationship with them, don't be afraid to ask them to spread the word for you. And also you can ask for written reviews or testimonials from your, from your best customers to share on your website or social media. And that's because uh, word of mouth recommendations are one of the best ways to promote what you're doing. Um, most people trust recommendations from friends and family more than any other type of promotion. So it's a great reason to encourage this in your communities. And yeah, team members and volunteers are a great place to start with this. Lockdown is going to be challenging and is challenging, not just going to be, it is challenging and has been challenging for everybody, um, not just at work, it's challenging in their personal life, you can't see your friends, you can't see your loved ones as much as you want to. So I think that, um, now we know that it's probably going to be a long winter and know that we got that really great news this week that there was potentially going to be a vaccine out in the spring, it's still we've got to get to the spring first. So um, scheduling days off for everybody because I think that's really important and also um, say thank you to your staff and your volunteers at the end of the day or at the end of the week and I, Kay mentioned to me yesterday that there's been research to say that verbal affirmation thank you for instance is as powerful if not more powerful than financial reward in to many people but if you do want to give like your staff and volunteers a small discount at shopping at your shop then there's links in the slide to set this up it's not just looking at the covid but it, we can be stronger together um as an ofn community uh, looking at any kind of day-to-day -day operations or week-to-week -week operations so i really encourage using the facebook group or other means to sort of to spread your top tips of what you think your hub does really well what works for you um, 
and then or equally ask for advice from others about what it, you find the most challenging part of your operation because they might have some really good ideas and by it's sort of bouncing ideas off each other you get better um it's better for everybody and equally when you go to things like covid and everybody's got to find face masks etc or hand sanitizer if you found a really good supplier that's cheap and ethical etc you could just put a note in the facebook group and spread the word um because I'm sure that every other hub in the country will want needs those face masks too. So it's always good. And every month uh, we're running like webinars where a hub will describe their work, uh, weekly operations. So Tame, Sarah from Tamar spoke a couple of weeks ago and um, she put a, um, she has some good ideas and there was a video that you can watch if you didn't attend the session um, so it's always good to look back at that and this is a point that came from last week's webinar and it came from Rosie at Bow House and it really made me think um, her she's mentioned that their ethos of Bow House at the moment was the focus of feeding their local community because they felt that they didn't have enough or they weren't strong enough to feed um, other people as well um, so they if they had orders from outside the area what they did was they um, contacted the customer and politely um, showed them and got them in contact with suppliers closer to them I think this is a really responsible thing to do as well because we are all been encouraged not to travel or make unnecessary journeys and if there's a really great source of local food um, close to a customer then it's much better that they purchase from them so making recommendations to um, the hub which is closer to the to a customer than you are perhaps is a good thing um, it doesn't have to be a hub on the OFN community um, network it could be um, something else I mean, if you want help on finding or recommending something someone a place to for someone to find food then get in touch with us so um, I'm going to hand over to questions and answers um and i don't know whether there's any in the in the chat but we can probably just open up to everyone okay awesome thanks louise yeah so um yeah is there any questions from from anyone from about any of the points that we've um touched on or does anyone want to introduce themselves um might have questions for each other I just wanted to say, Al, um, I hope you didn't mind that I used your your um, steaming with pride quote from the last uh, lockdown webinar. I thought that was really great. Mm. Well, I, only, I, I only stole it from somebody else, so don't worry <laughs> about that. Um, actually, I have a question about um, vulnerable customers, and I mean, how do how do people do it? Do they just, I mean, in terms of self isolating, do we just take it on trust that that's that's those, those people are are vulnerable or are self isolating, and um, and our, I, mean, I think Stradco, I think we're still we're charging people what whatever. I mean, is there a general consensus on on doing discounts for people who are who are vulnerable or self isolating, or do I, I thought Stradco were just doing sort of a straight fee for every for every delivery? Um, as far as I'm, I'm aware, um, I'm not sure that some people. I don't. I'm not sure whether people offer discounts to uh, vulnerable people for discount um, for delivery. Um, I know that a lot of hubs had limited delivery slots. So what they did was that they only offered um, delivery to those who were vulnerable and uh, who are self isolating. Um, so. Um, I'm not sure whether that answers your question or not, but I, if, I know that a delivery was something that you were thinking of setting up, Alistair. Have you managed to find drivers and everything that yet or not? Uh, no, I haven't really. I, well, I asked the question um, of all my customers and, and got a bit of a response back. I'm still sort of, um, and I've had some offer, I had one offer of, of help for delivery. So I was just trying to work out how to, whether I sort of, whether I got volunteers in health itself to, 
to do deliveries and I, and I don't charge for that. And then if I'm if it's me driving around then um, to some of the villages, then I think probably charging for that would be would probably be be, be required. Um, you but, see, um, I I'd yeah. argue maybe not, Alistair, because you say it's just you driving around, but um, there might come a point when you've got deliveries and you know you really want to be doing something else and you'd still have to pay for your petrol and also if you get into the practice of charging that little bit for deliveries you can always then build up a reserve of um, money and then you could use that reserve to offer a discount on delivery to someone who's elderly or vulnerable you know if you you can um you never know what's around the corner. And I think that um, for your business and all food hubs to be sustainable, um, it does mean you need to break even. Um, mm. So I think your time is as valuable as everyone else's time. And yeah, that I know that I find that hard to value my time, but I think um, it's something that, um, yeah. I think that's a really good point, Louise, and that would be my thoughts on that as well, is that what, whatever you do has to be sustainable for you and to keep and to keep your hub going. And also through, you're also um, operating something important through lockdown, really important. So it's, you've also got to kind of manage your own energy and what you can give and what you can do through that time. So, yeah. Um, I mean, I'd throw the curveball at you, Alistair, that... Um or at anyone really, that if you don't charge for delivery and then you get contact by Track and Trace and say, look, you've got to self-isolate for 14 days. Um, you can't do deliveries that, that week. So you're going to have to ask someone else to do the deliveries and they will ask for a wage or some money for doing those deliveries. And then if you haven't got any income from the customer, yeah. um, you're kind of stuck. <laughs> Also, most supermarkets. Yeah, no, I think, no, I think uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, was, sorry, I think I, what, what I was saying was, I, if I was driving around, I would charge for it. But if I, if if I had volunteers doing it for me, then in 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 the local town, then I probably wouldn't, or maybe or maybe I wouldn't. So I, it was that's the sort of thing. I was just I was just wondering about. Um, that sort of structure, or, or whether you just do like I think Stroco do, which is just a flat fee for for, if, for everybody, mm. which is what Tesco's do, isn't it? And, yeah, um, just market market. yeah. Um, we've got a we've got a comment from Sue in the chat, so I'm just going to read it out, and this is actually a good marketing news story. So. Um, just a tip from me, um, I can't put the video on because hubby has a loud film on, lots of shooting in the background. Um, so uh, I shared a Facebook post of a cake and about our shop on our local Rate Your Plate page. It's, it's normally a comments place about ro local restaurants. I was surprised it was accepted, not being cooked food. However, it's had over 4.5 thousand views and kicked off our orders. Yeah, so that's a good marketing news story. And that's a really good... Um, example of like thinking creatively around your community are there like that also counts on social media as well if like what relevant groups are there that might be a good platform for you to talk about what you're doing and yes yeah, so that's a really good example thank you so any other comments on questions i'd like to um, just introduce myself because I, I, I know Alistair already, you might not remember me, but I don't know uh, so the rest of you. Um, so I've, I'm working with the Wheel Farming Trust on a, it's a national piece of work. It's about ready meals, particularly addressing food poverty. Um, so I, it's, it's, it's only the start of the project, there's, there's time ahead, but if anyone's doing um, that kind of work, it'd be nice to get in touch with you and hear what you're doing. I see everyone. Hello. I think Jade. Um, I, I know Nick from the OFN support team is onboarding or getting um, 
long table i don't know whether you've heard of them they operate in stroud on the platform and i think there's other um people like uh, there's the gleaning network which i know slow food are working with as well but i don't think they do ready meals for um, vulnerable people but certainly um the long table that operates like that um there's some other hubs that have um social enterprises um Kent Food Hubs has um, a social enterprise attached to it. I think it's called Lily's Kitchen or something. Um, you might want to contact them um, to see how they're operating. Um, yeah, I know um, in terms of lockdown, I know that some hubs, I, for instance, I've noticed on Mercia, um, they take a fee for delivery, but part of that fee goes towards a donation to a food bank. Um, so there's lots of ways in which people are trying to give back um, to the community as, as well as providing a service um, and food, food security for people who can afford to buy it. Um, yeah, there's lots of things. There's I don't know whether that helps at all. Thank you. It's also with um, Tamar Grow Local, they do the, um, is it Grow, Grow, Eat, Cook, um, which is like, I, uh, yeah, the Grow, Eat, Cook um, incentive. I think that's what it's called. And I think that's where like people can grow and then cook, learn to cook their own um, vegetables. So there's another thing. I'm actually planning um, in the next, probably not next week, but the week after um, to do a webinar with guest hubs talking about everything to do with um, yeah, exactly this point of, of how to make um, food more accessible and any of these kinds of incentives that hubs might be doing to reach more people with, with good food. Um, so that will be, I'll be posting that in the Facebook group in a, or on Facebook in a couple of, it'll be happening in a couple of weeks. So still working on it. Thank you. So, yeah, if, um, actually, if you, if you want to, um, um, yeah, if you want to drop me an email, I can send you details of, of when it's happening, um, if you like. Yeah, thanks, Katie. I'll pass it on as well to the others. Thank you very much. Awesome. So any la last call out for any kind of questions or comments? Um, this webinar is going to be... Oh, was that a... No. Oh, well, I'm sorry, I was just going to say to, to Jay that there's a couple of West Cornwall um, examples that I can send to you if, if your details are somewhere or you can put them on the chat or something. Yes, I, I, Alistair, I'll, I'll put them on the chat now so you can see my email. Okay. okay. You're setting up a food hub, evidently, in Helston. Yeah, hub. yeah, I set one up in, in, in May and I'm just... Oh, okay. I'm just about to start one in Penzance as well. So um, we're growing. But I met, yeah, I met an interesting growing, growing links group this morning who are uh, doing some good stuff in Penzance. Great, fantastic. Cool. Okay, everyone. So yeah, I think we're finished a little bit early today. So um, I'm gonna post the recording of this session, be the presentation in the Facebook group. And thanks Jade for sharing your email. Um, I'll send you details about the, the webinar. And yeah, so thanks everyone for coming. And yeah, if, again, um, the Facebook group, Thriving Food Hubs, um, if you have any questions or anything else you wanna bring up, it's an open space. So feel free to post in there. And usually as well, people are quite quick to, like quite good about responding and uh, yeah, so. But thanks everyone for coming. I hope you enjoy your evening and hope to see you in the next webinar.